Online Broadcast Network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey everybody, welcome back to a new edition of Spotlight On. I'm here today with Taylor Ann Hasselhoff, who's not only known for her famous father, but also for uh, editing and hosting for Bellas TV, for creating a documentary, and dabbling into music. Thank you so much for ma making the time out to be here today, Taylor Ann. I'm so happy yeah. to be here. This is really dope. This is so cool. You're down the street from my house, so really happy to be here. It's awesome. awesome. Convenient. How are you today? Pretty good? I'm good. How are uh, you doing? Pretty good, yeah. Good, yeah. Cool out today. and I, I Well, coolish for LA. Coolish, yeah. Well, yeah. we're in the valley, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So let's get started. Uh, your dad's David Hasselhoff. Yes, ma'am. What was that? So he seems like a cool dad. What was it like growing up with him? Um, I mean, you know, it's so funny. Is I get this question all the time, but my dad is the, is the same way as your dad or anyone yeah. else's dad. Like, growing up, I thought it was normal to go to the beach every day after school. Kid you not, I really did. I thought it was just normal for him to be on TV, and I didn't realize until I was older that... Not every dad does that, you know? So I, I had a very normal upbringing. I went to a really great private school with some awesome people that, you know, didn't look at me any differently whatsoever. Good. So, I mean, my upbringing with him was just, it was great. It was a completely normal lifestyle for me. Well, that's good. I mean, it, I feel like it shouldn't be weird. So no. even if it was in the limelight and everything, at least it, you still turned out normal and everything. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. hope I'm normal. <laughs> what, was there anything, like, so there was nothing different growing up in the limelight of Hollywood, or? I mean, I, I think it's just when you, <laughs> probably the best thing is when I went to Riverway Camp, um, and I was there. Every time that I was going to camp, I would be like, wow, everyone, like, really is talkative to me, and I have, like, so many friends. <laughs> like, a few of my close friends were like, Tay, you can't be so nice to everybody. Like, everyone doesn't have, like, the best interests. I was going, no, I Everyone's so nice, you know, and then I was starting to realize as I grew up, yeah. you have to be a little bit careful about who you tell your whole life stories to um, mm -hmm. and who you bring in close to your little close circle. So that was definitely a learning experience for me because I just like love everyone. I don't think there's a bad bone in anyone's body, but um, definitely learned... You know, you gotta, there's, there's you gotta some choose. Evil, yeah, yeah. There's some evil out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're not all nice. No. But you even played a few roles, small roles on Baywatch as a kid. Yeah. What was that? Was that just like fun times on set? Or? Oh, dude. Um, <laughs> actually, it, the funniest thing is that I remember the one time I did it with my sister, and it was me and my sister. We got lost on a beach, <laughs> and our babysitter in the in the series was played by my cousin. Uh -huh. I'll never forget this because she probably will kill me for saying this, but she can't cry on camera. So my dad was going, how do we make you cry? What are we going to do? You have to cry on camera like Haley and Taylor Ann just got kidnapped almost. Like that's what she thought. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he did the little trick in the eyes and roll it, you know, and I'll <laughs> never forget that just being like, is it that hard for you to cry on camera? Well, obviously it is, but I was like, yeah. what, seven Six, seven? I think yeah. so. It was, I think it was 98 or 2000. So, okay, so then I was about yeah. eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I remember that and being super nervous about it because I had two lines, but it was like my first time. I was like, Dad, yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but yeah, it's super cute. I look at it now. Oh my gosh. It's, it's just so funny. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. so funny. Cool. And you're actually uh, filming, or you finished filming, right? A documentary for your dad. It's, you traveled around with him for six months. Can you tell us a little bit about the what what made you choose your dad as like the documentary? The, the documentary, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'm still currently filming it and uh -huh. editing it. So basically, you know, um, I was gonna do it something where it's you know maybe a two week thing where I followed the life of David Hasselhoff. But then he has such an interesting creative um, life, and he's doing so many different things, so many different passions that he has. He follows mm -hmm. you know after every dream. So I'm like, why would I stop it? two weeks why don't I make this so I can film him for at least six months yeah um so it's pretty neat it's like he comes down in the morning I have my camera ready hey dad how's it going you know he's like you Tay and your cameras but I did it because he's somebody that um 
that has followed after every dream and passion that he's ever wanted. You know, he's done Broadway. He's done a TV series. Mm -hmm. He's done singing. He's um, been a businessman. He's done everything that he's possibly wanted to do and is continuing doing that to this day. Yeah. So I feel like with me, it, it's such a great opportunity to kind of show what it takes to be a brand and what it takes to be relevant. You know, um, we just went to the Cannes Festival for um, – for brands and they said my dad my, they set my dad as an example as a brand that's been relevant for over 40 years mm -hmm. um, he keeps coming back and reinventing himself in a different way to reach that target audience that that's popular at that time um, and I found that to be so intriguing and so interesting that I was like you know I really want to do a documentary to show what it's like to have a passion and a dream and, and, and strive to do it since you're what you know four years old into your 64 two years old you yeah. know let's let's show your journey and how you made it and how you made yourself into the person that you are today um and I, i'm right now editing it and still filming it so hopefully by the middle of next year i'll be having it out awesome did you yeah. travel around the world with him too like you said you went to can and everything that was awesome yeah can is whoa, so cool <laughs> oh. um yeah, I did. I actually, so it was funny. Um, I got like my Canon camera, and my GoPro, and I was like, I've been learning how to edit and um, direct and stuff. So I, I said, Dad, where are you gonna be next week? You know, because I never know. His schedule is just ridiculous. Yeah. He's he's constantly working. So I said, Where are you gonna be next week? He's like, Well, I'm gonna be here, 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 here. I said, Okay, great. I'm gonna book a flight. So um, literally booked a flight. We went to. Um, I saw him in concert in Austria. It's like a hundred thousand people, which was man. I mean. They love him there. That's what. It was just yeah. awesome. It was really an eye-opening experience. It was really, really cool. Um, like I've been to Coachella and yeah, you know, little events. But your dad, what, you know. But then your dad going yeah. on stage, I was like, ha, ah, like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But it was great. So I, I went there for about ten days and just filmed him. I don't think we slept at all. It was just go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. Um, we went to um, yeah, the Can um ad festival, which is awesome. We went to Austria. Oh, I don't even know, man. We went to London, and then we just, it was just a constant thing. But it was cool to see, you know, what it takes in one week of somebody who's trying to do all these different careers at once, yeah. what it takes. And so, he fits it all in somehow, right? You have to. I mean, if, it, if this is your dream and your passion is what you want to do, yeah, you have to do it. That's awesome. So yeah. it was cool. Was that, what was the coolest experience you saw? Was it the the concert? or? Yeah, well, you know what? That yeah. was really awesome. But we had to take a little private um, jet. That, that fits two people, okay? <laughs> and it was raining, and there was thunder, and I'm going, oh my god, hell no. Oh we're, my we're god. Gonna, this is the end of it. So I have my GoPro, I'm like, hey guys, listen, you know, <laughs> if, if this might be the last video, because of course my GoPro is like in a waterproof case, mm -hmm. so if anyone so it'll found survive. it, it'll survive. Yeah. It'll have the, the last tales of the Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, if we uh, don't survive, this is the last video. So we're getting in this thing, and I'm going, oh my god, this is really scary. But I'm, I'm not gonna, I think after you get off a flight that's about an hour and you get off the plane you go right to a hotel meet the dancers for the first time go into a two-hour rehearsal literally get into a van go straight to a hundred thousand people go on stage do it get back on a flight <laughs> back on a private jet go back um to can and get off a flight go to bed for two hours wake up and do the can festival i mean there's like no time to worry you just like keep going that's keep just going. yeah that's just something that i will never i will never forget i yeah. mean and then i have on two hours of sleep the next day going <laughs> what the heck did we just do? Dad's like, welcome to my life. That's awesome. <laughs> Great. Good for him. That's awesome. Yeah. So you grew up in the limelight. Like your dad was an actor, musician and everything. What made, and did that make you want to continue doing showbiz type career or? Well, I think, you know, it's either, I feel like when you're in that entertainment world, it's either you're going to love it or you hate it. Mm -hmm. So growing up, it, my dad, my, my whole family always said to me, you know, you go after every dream you want. Whatever you, whatever passion, whatever drives you, that makes you happy, that's all that matters, you know? They're like, I don't care what you do with your life, you know? I don't care if you want to paint walls for the rest of your life and that makes you so happy, you know, whatever it is. I want you to do what drives you and makes you happy, you know? I, they always taught me that you should be doing, your work should be your passion. Um, cool. and, and that that makes it so going to work every day is yeah. exciting. Um, so for me growing up, I loved to sing. I was always in musicals and singing with my sister and I'm um, always doing theater. So I kind of grew up loving that side. Um, I grew awesome. up with my mom and dad both singing around the house <laughs> and being lively. So I've, I kind of grew to love it than, than think of it any negatively. Cool. But instead of doing like acting and stuff, you decided to take like a hosting, editing type route. What made you not do the typical, like a lot of 
ch- children of like famous actors and stuff decide to be like, I want to be an actress too. <laughs> what made you decide to kind of do kind of behind the scenes and hosting? Like what made you choose that instead? You know what's funny is that I did the acting route for a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's great. I love it. I mean, you can't you can't get me wrong about that. You know, theater and acting is, is great. It's wonderful. But yeah. something that drives me is telling interesting stories and finding out um, – uh, showing like the lives of different people that are that are interesting, you know. So for the magazine that I that I work for, um, Bellis Magazine, we um, all we do is just try to you know share and tell stories of very interesting people and how they got started. You know, Bellis means beauty in Latin, so yeah. it's all about finding the beauty and artistry. So we'll do a section about charity, about fashion, about um, acting, singing, whatever it is. Like I want to be able to tell your story, mm-hmm. um, and I love talking to people, and I and I love being able to get a message out there that hopefully will inspire other people to want to follow their dreams and passions, and and hopefully you know the magazine and whatever I do can can kind of give an insight of, well, this is how this person did it, you know. Um, maybe now it can inspire you to go, okay, this do is that. how maybe I should go up about, or this is how they did it. I can still do it too, you know. Yeah. I came from nothing, but I can make something of myself. Cool. So for that, yeah, that that's how that happened. And then behind the scenes, man, I really like editing, and I like directing. It's fun. After I did, I swear, it was after those <laughs> 10 days, I was like, this is really awesome. Like, I loved it. Like, then you start getting artsy with it and being creative with the lenses. <laughs> By the end of it, I was like, I really like this. I'm going to do this forever. That's awesome. So, yeah. Especially editing. Together. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people think, like, editing so tedious and stuff, too, but it's good that you like it. <laughs> it is tedious. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still learning it, but it's it's definitely, like, I feel like you get better and better mm-hmm. as you go along you and go along yeah it, practice so. makes perfect and stuff totally. right totally yeah but you mentioned uh, so bellis magazine and you do a bunch of interviews and stuff but you also help with charities and everything and you all you just released a psa for um cyberbullying yeah yeah we actually have the clip of it so Ooh. let's check that out <laughs> <laughs> you're so cute <laughs> let's check that out yeah. cute there it is there it is josh cool. better be so proud of me <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Books, theaters, Ooh, there and it is. And we can now reach a much larger audience. But just like when meeting someone in person, we must maintain our manners and respect people's customs. When commenting about someone online, whether about work, family, or friends, remember it's a real person with real feelings. You wouldn't just walk up to someone and attack him. So don't do it on the Party internet. Party in the next room. Do your part. Yeah, right. <laughs> See someone attacking another one online, even if just rude. Tell them it is not okay. Remember the golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. And help us stop cyberbullying. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so what made you choose cyberbullying? Is that like a do you have a personal history with it or do you know somebody that like can you tell us about? Yeah, of course. So um Joshua Schultz, who I run Bellas Magazine with, mm-hmm. he came to me and said, you know, I've had a lot of people recently been cyberbullied. Um, and there's a really big epidemic going on where a ton of kids are being cyberbullied and it ruins them. You know, it's a very hard thing yeah. to deal with. And I don't think people are giving enough attention and focusing on that. So he's like, you know, we should put out a PSA that we can put out there um, that can at least help spread the word that this is going on. And if you guys want to help out, you know, we're all about, hey, film yourself, you know, sideways on your phone <laughs> and discuss how you feel. And then you hashtag golden rule and hashtag um, help cyberbullying. And hopefully that will just get traction out there so people can start to realize that, like, it's really it's an, it's, issue, it's an yeah. issue and it's painful for kids, especially when they're young and and they're and they're so susceptible to everything online everything's social media nowadays and it's like there's so many experiences where kids can go online and one little thing one negative comment can really just bring them down away yeah Mm -hmm. and it just weigh them down for the rest of their lives and who wants that you know so we just decided to make a psa and we're going to keep doing it every couple weeks we're going to do more and more and hopefully just get the word out there that can hopefully you know help people to realize that it's a problem and you know you need to you need to help these kids out too yeah that's good that's awesome yeah um and you're big into charities that's not just the only um cause that you support what are some other charities that you like volunteer and help out with well i love the la mission Mm -hmm. they're awesome every year i go down there either christmas time or during november thanksgiving time and you feed the homeless and that is the coolest experience you talk about telling interesting stories these people have stories 
that you just you just like you just brought into it and you want to know more and more about it and it's so sad because half the time these people you know they had a great life and they came back and either their family disowned them or threw them out for no reason mm-hmm. and it's like well where do they go from there it's and sad, so yeah. it's sad it's really it's terrible and then at the la mission they give like free clothes and free meals and a little live music and you know it's just nice to be able to give someone the opportunity to smile for a day or yeah. just to feel happy for a couple hours mm-hmm. so that is one that i'll be doing probably every single year so you'll find me there this year <laughs> is it it's around christmas time yeah you know it's they're they're all year long oh, okay. but when i i usually try to help out during the holidays because that's when they need more help yeah um they usually like line up everyone lines up downtown and you just sit there and you serve them and hey how's it going you know if you want some free clothes over there and they just sit down and it's a whole day event um during thanksgiving time and it's fun because you get to you know make all the food before and like sit down with all these really cool people and um awesome it's yeah it's pretty it's pretty great it's pretty fun so ellie mission if you guys don't know about them check them out yeah awesome awesome. cool yeah thanks for doing like your part and helping out the like everybody yeah. you know you should do it with me this year yeah, maybe I yeah. Will, yeah let's do it <laughs> i have some one of my friends does it too and oh, he, really? he um on like skid row and stuff yeah, yeah. exactly so, that's where yeah. it is yeah it's cool it's awesome um but to go to a different route you your sister Haley is a singer and I heard you're going to be dabbling into singing, too. Can you tell us a little bit? Well, we're both singers. We yeah. started a band together um, awesome. called Bella Vida about, I would say, seven years ago. We did the whole touring thing for about two years. We you know, recorded, wrote everything, went on tour in Europe mm-hmm. for a long time. Um, loved it. It was wonderful being in a sister group with your sister. You know, yeah. it was great. But at that time, you know, after about two years, you know, we, we both have other passions, too, that we want to dabble into. So she actually, she's she's recording as well, and I am, too. So we kind of did our own separate root thing. Yeah. Um, and it's cool because we have very different voices. So it's it's cool to see what, what her style is now and then what mine is. So, yeah, I just went in the studio, and finally it's, like, my first single on my own. It's awesome. Which is just exciting, you yeah. know, to finally be able to do something that's all you and all your creativity. And um, I'm back with the same producer that I worked with with Haley. Um, and yeah, I just finished recording it and writing it and hopefully it'll be out by the end of the year. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. The end of the year. That's like a few months. That's like soon. Oh, (laughs) So what's your style of music? Like, what do you kind of sing like? Well, I really like Sam Smith right now. Love. Um, and and I love Disclosure. I love Miguel. I love Aloe Black. That kind of vibe is just super cool. It's like feel good vibe. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have a little bit of that. But you'll see. You'll see. Oh, leaving us. <laughs> you you got to try to, like, put a little bit of your own swag into it. But those are the people that I listen to and that I really gravitate towards. Mm-hmm. So so is it more kind of acoustic-y kind of? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess nice. it's, like, it's acoustic but it has I, – I love electronic music. Yeah. So I feel like it still has that dancey vibe to it where you still can put it on and it's like it has a little bit of dubstep in it. Oh, that's um, cool. And a nice break to it. So it's not all acoustic. But you could play, you know, so if you want to do, like, a live performance, you could do the acoustic, you know. Cool. Or yeah. if you want to, like, go and dance. Dance, you know, you can and just put it actually on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. So it's both, yeah. Is there any type, is there any singer that you'd, like, dream of collaborating with? or? <sighs> Sam Smith, man. Yeah. I mean, brilliant. Do a duet. Just, yeah. yeah, brilliant. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely Sam Smith, yeah. for sure. I saw him at Austin City Limits. He was pretty good. You did? Yeah. So mm-hmm. great, right? <laughs> yeah. Just like you just look at him and you're just like, I love everything about you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just so sad, though. He's just so sad. I just um, want him to be happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, you're so busy doing practically, like, everything. Is, <laughs> you're so funny. Is there, yeah. Is there anything that you're not doing that you want to do? Is there anything that I'm not doing that I want to do? I want to take over the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably spend more time doing animal charity stuff. I, I started an animal charity about a year ago called Tay's Ark. And, um, it's, it's cool. All, yeah, <laughs> like Noah's Ark, yeah. but, yeah, hilarious. Um, so it's all about you know, finding animals in in kill shelters where, you know, you can give money to them so that you can have a better environment, you know, being in a, in a shelter for how long you're going to be there. So I did that for a while and I have not had the time to go down to these (laughs) shelters and really give my time. I used to all the time. And I love, I love animals. If you came Mm -hmm. to my house, we have a farm. (laughs) I had a pelly pig. I saw the video of your pets. You did? The Bellis pets thing. Oh, you saw that? (laughs) Yeah. I have so many animals, but not too many that we can't have them all, but Mm -hmm. I did have a, a pig. I loved my babe yeah. but um yeah I have so many and I, and I love 
playing with animals and interacting with animals. Yeah. And like, I think I was a dog whisperer in my past life, but <laughs> don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, my first job, actually, was dog training. Oh, And wow. I still, like, do that on the side for people that need help. Like, I love animals. So if I could do that, yeah, I'd probably want to do more animal charity stuff. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. You just love doing charity. That- it's fun. Yeah. It's great. Like, being able to see people smile and, like, have a good time, like, how can yeah. anything be better than that? Yeah, it matters the most, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> well, when? Well, also, when can we expect your documentary to come out? Well, I don't want to give a hard date because okay. you never really know in this business how long things will take. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm aiming for next year sometime. So we'll see. You know, we're, we're in it, doing yeah. it every single day, just going for it. So, But, you know, the thing is, like, I keep adding more footage to it. So it's, like, it's going to be super. Maybe it's, like, 10 years from now, but I'm <laughs> hoping for next year. So... Fingers crossed. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to ask you some fun questions cool. now. Love just, fun questions. Yeah, just because. Um, so, what's your favorite uh, David Hasselhoff song? Ooh. <laughs> um, it's not Looking for Freedom. Let's think everyone knows that song. It's my favorite. Yeah. Is it really? Cause it's yeah. like the only song that you do know, though, right? No, I know like <laughs> three of them or four. Oh, you do? But like I did this tour of Europe and uh, it was a bus tour and that was our like jam. Looking Stop for Freedom. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's yeah. rad. And then they changed it to Paris Je T'aime when we went to Paris. Just, just switch oh, it Oh, that's too funny. funny. So yeah. you do know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, my favorite song... Um, <laughs> Probably limbo dance. I just it's like limbo cool, limbo fun. Everybody gets a chance. Oh, yeah. It's just like it's it's a fun song. I like mm. it's just fun, like you know, just to put it on and, and it's like reggae too. And the video just kills me of laughter. It's yeah. awesome. So, I love all his videos. They're oh, so dude. Fun. There's one with you, uh, the two you you and your sister as I'm like angels. Feeling. Yeah, I'll never forget that day. We were harnessed up. My dad was like, you know, he, he was signed to a record label. He was doing really well. And they're like, listen, you know, we want to put all this money into a music video. My dad said, I want to make the stupidest music video <laughs> that could possibly be out there. You know, he wants to make people laugh. He yeah. wants people to enjoy life, too. So he said, let's make the stupidest video ever. <laughs> so legit, in the video, like, my two dachshunds, we were, they're I'm, flying in yeah. the sky with me and my sister. My my dogs are in the video catching fish out of a lake. Um, my dad's, like, coming in with a mask on. So bizarre. So retarded. People didn't understand it, but that's the whole reason. We wanted to do something, like, who cares? Yeah. Do you want to do, like, a, a, like a beautiful music video? Do you want to do something that people want to watch and, like, enjoy and be like, that was hilarious. That made my day. Yeah. Why not make someone's day than put something on and be like, I wish I was them, you know? It's mm-hmm. better that way. So he literally put me and my sister in a harness, and I will never freaking <laughs> forget this. We were behind, There was a green screen, and me and my sister were like, this is so fun, but we couldn't flip because they were making you do, like, flips, you know? Mm-hmm. And we were, like, we were, like, these fat little girls. Like, we can't flip, Dad. Like, we don't know what to do. He's like, you need to flip. So he's like, they'd have someone come behind us and, like, push us. So they'd be like, roll it. So we'd be, like, flipping, like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and, like, you'll see in, in the video, there's a couple times we were, like, we'll do, like, a half flip. And they'll go to, like, the next, you know, the cut to, like, the next scene. Yeah. I was like, that's because we couldn't physically flip. That's awesome. <laughs> that was funny, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My roommate makes me watch that sometimes because she loves the dachshunds oh she's no. like obsessed with dachshunds me too yeah. we're like a dachshund family when i was born i had 15 animals Whoa. 15 dogs and they were all dachshunds except oh for like gosh. three so i became a dachshund fan- fanatic they're pretty cute obsessed. yes <laughs> they're really cute awesome. now it's like i have to go into another dogs so it's like i'm a little bit dachshund out but yeah. they're cool dogs <laughs> cool and okay so if you could eat dinner with one person in the world who would it be oh my goodness alive or dead it could be either yeah hey, um one person in the world i'm one person you know it'd be actually really cool to have dinner with president obama what is it like to be president yeah right. that's all i would like to know you know i don't really want to get into politics and all that jazz but if i could find out like what the heck is it like to be president and what do you do at night that's so intri- interesting mm-hmm. to me it's like, so intriguing so he yeah, seems probably. cool too. He seems really yeah. cool. He's a good talker. He is yeah. a good talker. Yeah. We, we would mesh well with him. We'd be yeah. like, what's up? what's up, President Obama? Mm. How you doing? Hello. <laughs> Hello, girls. Hello, I don't girls. Know. It's yeah. a nice impression. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so if you couldn't be in the entertainment industry and n- not charities either, because you mentioned that, what would you be? <laughs> a vet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, growing up, I had like, this fascination with dogs' teeth. I don't know, it's really weird. But, like, growing up, like, whenever I see a little puppy, I'm like, look at your little teeth, uh, my little cute teeth. Yeah. So, 
my mom would always tell me like you're probably gonna be a vet when you're older but and I really wanted to do it until I realized how much schooling and how much you have to do yeah. with that I was like hell no it's not mm-hmm. for me I have too much ADD for that I couldn't do it just couldn't do it yeah I wanted to be a vet for a little bit then I realized you have to see dogs die sometimes <laughs> so I was like nope can't handle that oh my gosh no, no. yeah and I mean that's like the downside to it you know yeah. you really you have to realize there's not a positive so always yeah to that. yeah mm-hmm um, so do you have any advice for people that want to like say do a documentary or host or anything like what do you what do you think um advice you got to just keep at it mm-hmm. um the best advice that I was given was interview everything and everyone go home interview your chair hey how's it going <laughs> you know interview the tv interview you know your cat whatever it is the more experienced the more comfortable that you are just being you and your own brand and and who you are the better that you're going to be um and I think a lot of times like when the camera rolls or when you have a dream or a passion for something you freeze up and you're too scared to go for it you know you give it your all like for example with like this documentary I was like I don't know how to film (laughs) yeah all right but if you don't go out there and try how do you know you're you're you're, Mm -hmm. you don't know if you're good at something until you go out there and you actually try yeah so you might as well go for something and give your all to it and, and and realize that you're gonna fall and you're gonna have to pick yourself back up but the more that you fall the better that you get so you just continue striving so I just say you know just if you have a dream or passion you go for it you know like 100 awesome. percent and if you're not going to give your 110 percent then don't do it mm-hmm. because you're not going to strive at, at anything unless you really give your all for yeah it. awesome awesome well thanks so much for being here today thanks so much for so, having me yeah super fun where can uh they fi- the viewers vi- find you on the internet where can you guys find me on the internet yeah. <laughs> um, you can find me um at tay hoff is my username because taylor ann hasloff was taken yeah bummer uh, but yeah at tay hoff on twitter and instagram and then you can go to my website taylor hasselhoff.com to see what i'm doing and um also check out bellismagazine.com you'll yeah. see all my new interviews we have uh, pretty cool new interviews coming up so new exciting things so yeah check me out awesome well thanks so much for watching guys uh, my name's kelly mcinerney you could find me at holly weirdo on twitter and instagram because kelly mcinerney was taken too same thing yeah. i didn't shorten it though um check us out next time and yeah see you next time bye Ew. from executive yeah. producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire AfterBuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. i'm sir richard wentworth and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz tv the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz tv or its owners or principals 